Okay, we're back. All right, here is a quick example. I'll just write up here the thing that we just learned, which is that x prime is x cosine theta plus y sine theta, and that y prime is y cosine theta minus x sine theta. Okay, keeping that in mind, I can now uh, give you a certain problem, like, here's a problem. Take 25 x prime squared plus 4 y prime squared equals 100. And I'm going to tell you that theta equals 30 degrees. In other words, I'm introducing to you a conic in which the axes have been rotated by 30 degrees. And with respect to these new axes, uh, this is a very happy conic. So actually, if I wanted to graph this conic, I could do that right now. What is this? It's x prime, uh, it's just x prime squared over 4 plus y prime squared over 25 equals 1. So what does this conic look like? Well, I can draw a picture of it. Let's do it over here. What's it going to look like? Well, these are the x and y axes, so they're useless to me. What I want are x prime, y prime axes. So now I'm going to rotate this thing 30 degrees. So that looks like about 30 degrees. And with respect to these new axes, this is just an ellipse with these relationships. In other words, it is going to be a vertical ellipse. Uh, and the vertices are going to be at 5 out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and with respect to the x-axis, 1, 2, 1, 2. So this is the picture of the ellipse under discussion, and what I want is the normal equation of that ellipse. Well, I simply use these formulas, right? Uh, so these formulas tell me uh, everything I need to know, so let's do it. This is 25. What is x prime? Well, x prime is that. So it's cosine theta and cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. So it's root 3 over 2x plus 1 half y squared plus 4 times... Uh, root 3 over 2y minus 1 half x squared equals 100. Is that all in the frame? Can you just double check? Right. And now what we do is, good? Oh, yeah, yeah. What we do is just crank this out, basically, right? And I think it might be helpful to uh, pull like some of the fractions out actually first. So this, if we pull out the 4, this is like, I think this is a good way to do it. Should I move it yet, or do you still want no, to No, you can, just, you can leave it on this whole thing. Because, uh, anyway, now we just, we just basically just crank out some algebra now. I don't know what to do. I think I'll just, I think I'll pull out the 4. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, root 3x plus y. And we get uh, 4 divided by 4, so that just becomes a 1. So root 3y minus x squared equals 100, and I can even multiply through by 4. I think that seems like a good idea. Um, so, and let's expand everything. So I get 25 3x squared plus 2 root 3xy plus uh, y squared plus 4, 3y squared minus 2 root 3xy plus x squared equals 400. That's because I, I, did, I multiplied by 4 uh, through the whole thing, and I also just am expanding these, uh, these binomials. Okay, and now just continue to multiply everything out. So 75. Notice I have these annoying xy terms, but I think they're about to cancel, right? No, they don't look like they're going to cancel, do they? 
Oh no, they're not going to cancel. That's the whole point. So you get 75x squared uh, plus 50 root 3 plus 25y squared. Okay, so putting this all together, I end up with 79x squared um, minus 42 root 3 xy plus 37y squared, and that's it, minus 400 equals 0. And that is exactly what's on my paper. Okay, and notice the existence of this dreaded xy term. Uh, and yeah, it's terrible. Um, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, so, um, so that's so that's that. Um, of course, the real task is uh, this is easy, right? This is just like take a formula and plug it in. This is not that exciting to me. What's really exciting to me is the ability to take a conic with an xy term, and what we essentially need to do is like unrotate it. I want to figure out what the relationships are in this conic, but so this, this is the easy half. This is still like introduction. Okay, let's do one more of these um, so that we kind of get comfortable with it. So again, I will tell you that what we have is, um, oh, and by the way, let me note one more thing, which is, well, okay, I, I won't note it yet. So I'll give you a new equation. The new equation is x prime equals y prime uh, squared plus 2. And now theta is arc sine negative 3 fifths. This is the original problem. Which, and yeah, yeah, you can just move it totally, so if they need to look back at the old one, they can just like pause or whatever. So just shift the entire camera over. You can even pick it up and lift it if you want. Um, so, uh, what is going on now? Now I have a parabola, right? It is a parabola. It is a y squared equals parabola. Let's put it in a kind of more standard form. So it's uh, y prime squared equals x prime minus 2. So if I want to get serious about this. The picture seems to be wrong. Oh no, it's not wrong. Um, because how much is arcs? Okay, so so let's let's make a graph first, just so we know what I'm talking about. Well, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and I'm now I'm gonna rotate by arc sine negative three fifths. How much is arc sine negative three fifths? Well it's like I need to go um, yeah, like that much, right? So where that's 4, and that's negative 3, and that's 5. So that is my angle. So I'm rotating uh, counterclockwise now, or um, clockwise, I guess. So these are my new axes are like this or something. Yeah. And this is my y prime axis, and this is my x prime axis. Okay, well, with respect to these axes, we know from our experience graphing parabolas that this is, a, this is a y squared parabola, so this is therefore a horizontal parabola. And it's a horizontal parabola whose vertex is at uh, 2, but 2 along the x prime axis. So I have to move over 2 along the x prime axis, and basically, okay, without getting into all the other crap, this parabola is going to look something like this. I'm kind of skipping all the like the Q and the directions and stuff like that for now. But I just want a general picture of this of this problem. Okay, uh, it is a sort of an opening right parabola, but it's opening right along the x prime axis. All right, and now I'm basically just going to do the exact same thing I did before again, but now it's just a little bit more annoying is all because uh, theta is not a simple angle like 30 degrees. So what is it? Perhaps it's worth it to write out, um, or not. I guess we could just start. So what is y? So let's start with y prime squared equals x prime minus 2. What is y prime? Well, according to my formula, 
I can see it even if you can't, but you should have written it down. It's y cosine theta. So this is going to be y uh, and cosine. I need to know what the cosine of arc sine negative 3 fifths is. Well, I can just see from my picture that that's 4 fifths. So this is going to be y times 4 fifths squared equals x prime and x, no, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, it's, it's y cosine theta minus x sine theta, and sine theta will be negative 3 fifths. So it's that squared uh, equals x prime, which is x cosine theta, so that's x times 4 fifths um, plus y sine theta, so that's y and sine theta is negative 3 fifths. And all of that plus 2. Cool. And now I just expand this whole thing out. Again, it's probably worth it to factor out a 125th. So I get 125th. Um, this is basically 4y plus 3x squared equals 4 fifths x minus 3 fifths y plus 2. And now I will multiply through by 25 because I just, I just don't like fractions. So I get 16y squared plus 24xy plus 9x squared, reemergence of the dreaded xy term. And I'm multiplying through by 25, so that becomes 20x minus 12y plus 50. And I think I'm basically done, so I get, putting it in a kind of a standard form, it's 9x squared plus 24xy plus 16y squared minus 20x plus 12y minus 50 equals 0. Let's see if I made any mistakes. I don't think so. Oh no, apparently I did make a mistake. Can I not do... Oh yeah, I'm done. Five. 25 times 3 fifths, that should be a 15. Man. Okay, now it's good. Um, but notice that this time I did prepare this lesson in advance by actually doing out all the problems. So that's good. All right, so what have we accomplished here? We have accomplished uh, putting the equation back in its normal standard form. And now something really interesting is happening. And the really interesting thing that's happening is, um, is that... Uh, is that, uh, look at these terms. Notice that there's an x squared term here and a y squared term here. We had absolutely no idea, if you just, if I just gave you this equation right here, this star equation, you would have no idea that this was in fact a parabola. Okay, this equation is in fact a parabola, but it is a parabola with respect to these new rotated axes, and you're, you are not able to just simply look at the 9 and the 16. You might, you, might be, you might think that this was an ellipse, and you would be wrong. All right. Um, cool. Uh, and again, uh, the real goal is trying to figure out how to do this backwards. We need to figure out, given an equation like this, how do I transform it back into this? And some of you are already thinking that now what we need now that we've developed x prime and y prime in terms of x and y, what we really need is an equation which gives us x and y in terms of x prime and y prime. And that is exactly what we're going to do now. So you can even just take a minute and start doing that algebraically uh, yourself as I erase the board. Okay, so we take the equations that we had a minute ago, x prime equals x cosine theta plus y sine theta, and y prime equals y cosine theta minus x sine theta. And uh, now we basically just do some algebra, right? 
So solve for x and y out of all of this. Okay, how do I do this? Answer, um, just like some algebra, I guess. Um, I don't know, like just do it. Uh, I have some work here. I don't know, like, what the hell is all this? Okay, so, yeah, maybe like multiply through by stuff and like cancel stuff. Oh, it's probably better if I wrote it the other way. So this is y sine theta, and this is plus uh, x cosine theta. Yeah, so just kind of like do some stuff. Uh, let's eliminate y first. So if we want to eliminate y, we should multiply this one through by cosine. So cosine theta x prime equals sine theta cosine theta y plus x cosine squared theta. And here multiply through by sine, I guess. So we get sine theta y prime equals sine theta cosine theta y plus minus x sine squared theta. I think I did that right. Then subtract these two equations. Um, and if I do that, I get uh, x prime cosine theta minus y prime sine theta equals those die and now we get, okay well actually look what we get, right? We get x cosine squared uh, minus negative as in plus sine squared, so this is actually just x. Okay, this is kind of easy. Uh, and I guess I can do the same thing again to figure out what y is y is going to be um, now I'll just eliminate the x so I'm also going to put a sign so this is going to be Y prime. Okay, pause in the video.